Sports and Tri-State Megabucks present Candlepin Stars and Strikes. Yeah! Yeah! Come on! Oh! 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 oh, oh, oh. Candlepin Stars and Strikes is sponsored in part by Rockingham Toyota Dodge Nissan. You're going to hear some noise if this is a strike. Got a shot at it! Yeah! Stars and Strikes is produced in conjunction with the New Hampshire Candlepin Bowling Association. And now your hosts, Doug Brown and Dan Murphy. Hi, everybody, and welcome once again to Park Place Lanes here in Wyndham, New Hampshire for two full hours of Candlepin Stars and Strikes. I'm Doug Brown along with Dan Murphy. This is semifinal week. First of all, in men's singles as we move ever closer to another qualifier for the Tri-State Megabucks Tournament of the Champions. And we've got three particularly strong bowlers left in this ladder. It's like uh, famous gunslingers with a mm -hmm. reputation. Uh, two great ones today and another one next week. Uh, this week, Steve Adney and Gary Carrington. All right, last week, if you missed it, uh, Gary Carrington coming in at the number three slot. Got a win over Reggie DeLine with a 379, and now he's going to try and make it two in a row. So let's meet our two bowlers, give you a look at their forms here as we get set, set to start this match. First of all, our number three seed, looking for that second win in a row from Plastow, New Hampshire, Gary Carrington. Okay, and Gary comes in averaging 127, has a high single of 195. His roll-off score, 683. And, of course, that 379 last week, he was able to kind of make some adjustments, it seemed, uh, after struggling with his first ball in the first couple of games, and then in the third game, rolled much better. He never had trouble with that second ball all day long, though. He picked up some great spares, so uh, I expected the same from both bowlers this week. All right, let's meet uh, Gary's uh, opponent for this program. He's certainly no stranger to those of us here at Candlepin Stars and Strikes, although he is making his first appearance here with us this season. Our number two seed from Claremont, New Hampshire, Steve Vadney. He's only been with us about 32 times. His record is 22 and 10. <laughs> Average is 128. His roll-off score is 685. Well, we've got uh, terrific bowling left to go here in this series on Stars and Strikes. It'll be Gary Carrington and Steve Vadney, three total strings in this match. And then, of course, the winner moves on to championship week one week from today. We have $60 in the bonus ball contest. That'll come up at the end of this week's program. We'll tell you more about that as we move along. But we're going to get this match started. It should be a great one. Don't go away. Gary Carrington and Steve Vadney right after this timeout. Don't go away. All right, we have reached semifinal week here on Candlepin Stars and Strikes. It was Reggie DeLine who dominated the first week with a 404, beating Al Bolduck. But then last week, Reggie was knocked off by Gary Carrington's 379. So Gary will try and make it two in a row against our number two seed, Steve Vadney. The winner of this one, of course, comes back next week to face our number one seed, Tom Morgan. But uh, Gary Carrington set to get this match started now. Lane 32 here at Park Place. Looking for win number two in a row. I'm looking forward to this one. I think this is going to be a good one. Certainly the potential is there, as it will be next week, too, with Tom Morgan coming in. Yeah, as Gary starts with a spare. And his forte the last few weeks, and been able to pick up those spares. Well, very similar pattern, as you mentioned, Dan. He threw that first ball. He kind of put his arms up in the air as if to say, oh, what have I done? I think he might have expected to get a half Worcester on that opening ball. And he turned it into a spare, and now he's got a chance at another one. Seven drop, two, four, five, triangle left for Gary, trying to make it two marks in a row. Little light. Watch out. Just missed coming back for the five pin. And the ten box. 27 through two. First look in about a year. Right, Doug? First yeah. Steve Adney. It's been a long drought for Steve. Maybe as long as he's had. All right, right on. Begun to think he didn't like us anymore. I think he's given some other people a chance. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Last time Steve was here was uh, March of 91. Almost exactly a year ago today when he beat Steve Vadney. Or rather, he beat Steve Reno. <laughs> He's good, but he hasn't done that no, that's yet. That's right. He beat Steve Reno, and then the following week, he lost a series championship match to Paul Berger. Steve has, uh, in all the times he has been here, he has yet to be in a tournament of champions. So that's Amazing stat with all the appearances he's made. Right here. 
And he knows he's got to beat a couple of pretty tough competitors if he's going to make this one, because if he gets by this match, then he has to face Tom Morgan next week. So two very difficult opponents in a row. Not there for Steve. And before we go any further, Doug, I'd like to uh, wish you a happy birthday. A little birdie told me that today was your 21st birthday again. Yep. <laughs> Thank you very much. Um, it's my invitation to the party in the mail, or I, yeah. I haven't gotten it yet. So. Yeah. It's okay, though. I mean, I, I'm not really too hung up about what my real age is. So, I mean, it doesn't really bother me if you say my real age, as long as you get it right. <laughs> 44? <laughs> That's a pretty good age, too, you know, Doug. <laughs> uh, now, was it 35? 35. 35. Yeah. Okay. Yep. God, you're just a baby. <laughs> Spare and a third for Gary Carrington. Well, I'll tell you, you know what's scary, and I'm sure you thought the same thing, is you, you, we've been on the air almost eight years now, and you get to know the bowlers and their families and so on and so forth, and, and uh, particularly in the case of Steve Vadnate, talking uh, to his daughter Jennifer no. uh, on the phone and I realized she was telling me she's in high school and she's going for her driver's license and all this kind of thing and boy, when we started she was only what eight nine <laughs> no. it's great how they grow uh, get older and we don't huh? that was that was a lob that last roll by Gary Carrington okay. so that'll be a seven uh, seven or seven on the spare and a seven in the box for Gary Carrington so that's 51 sure through 4. It wasn't an 8. I think it was an 8. 8, uh, right. Yeah. It was an 8. You're right. But uh, it really is something when you, you watch the families grow up, and it's like it's one huge family, the people who are here a lot and so forth, and uh, you sit back and think every once in a while, and it's kind of scary. Steve Vadney lo still looking for his first mark. That looks like a pretty good ball. Ooh, a rocking five pin. Let me know a Steve ball backs up a little bit, breaks a little bit from left to right. Opposite that you would think a normal right hander would throw the ball. Yes. Mark number one for Steve. It won't be his last. Guarantee you that. These guys can both string them together. Good effort for that spare. Leaves himself the 8 10. On a more happy note, we should mention, in fact, fact by the time... Well, my birthday isn't a happy note? <laughs> well, another happy note, I should oh, say. okay. <laughs> I was going to say, I, I really don't mind, you know? Uh, probably, as uh, this show is aired, um, you will see Peter Flynn back on the lanes, but his mm. surgery uh, was a complete success, I guess, and um, we expect to see him back. So That's great news. Great news is right. So. Our best, as always, uh, and on behalf of everybody who's a fan of candle pin bowling and uh, familiar with Peter, our best wishes for his continued speedy recovery. A lot of people have been concerned and calling and writing and so on. A pair of nines for Gary Carrington that time. So Steve Vadney with a chance to build on this mark here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that has to be a classic. I, I always remember that one. <laughs> I'm happy now. But I do really appreciate you mentioning it, Dan. <laughs> That's a six fill for Steve. Okay, let's focus. <clears throat> Back on the match here. <laughs> 36 now. <laughs> and yes. four row. That's a great shot. We've talked about this lead before, Dan, but let's watch it again. This is a very difficult spare. Three, five, six, and ten. 
as Doug alluded to a few moments ago, yeah. these balls can streak them, string them together, and a lot of these streaks together. And well, if Steve is going to keep this one going, it's going to be a mighty fine shot. He's pulled himself within two with that five fill. Steve's wife, Annette, daughter, Jennifer, the aforementioned Jennifer and son, Stevie, are all here. Steve works at Sturm Ruger and Company. Yeah, nice, uh, a nice nine box. Steve does a lot of his bowling at the Sunset Lanes in Newport. It was a very nice uh, feature article on Steve in the uh, Claremont Eagle Times several weeks back. A nice photo, too. It looked like he posed in that photo, doesn't yeah. it? Five pin left for Gary Carrington. Nice little guide off to the right. If he misses it by a, no, he's gonna be right on it. No problem <laughs> there. Wasn't even thinking about that wood. As you have as many birthdays as I do, then you start thinking about the wood. <laughs> uh, a little heavy on the head pin. Let's see. Seven pin drop. The two, the eight, and the ten. This could be interesting, though, because that wood in front is slightly angled. He's going to catch that wood first and into the two pin. Oh, wow. I thought he had a, yeah, he's kind of talking to himself, too. I thought he had a real chance at making that. Nine and 96. Steve and Gary have bowled against each other before here on Stars and Strikes. Go back to April of 1988, April the 24th to be exact. Steve beat Gary Carrington in a series championship match, 390 to 327. But unfortunately for Steve, that was the year before we began <laughs> the Tournament of the Champions. The champions so. <laughs> In fact, one of the other guys that Steve beat in that run, he won three matches in that series. One of the guys he beat, one of the other guys he beat was Tom Morgan. All right, right here. Who will be with us next week, so deja vu for some of these bowlers. Steve on lane 31, just catching the head pin. Look out, it'll be the 2-5. bring things just about even probably three marks for each bowler all spares Gary Carrington up on lane 32 he has three marks and they're all on that lane 32 Gary's family is here as well his wife Kathleen oldest son Matthew younger son Michael all here watching the action here at Park Place and it's about time for us to start cluing you in on our taping dates for the Tri-State Megabucks Tournament of Champions. So if you want to grab a pen and some paper, uh, get it handy. And a little bit later on in the show, we'll give you those taping dates for the Tri-State Megabucks Tournament of Champions. Remember, two of them this year, the regular singles, which will be our fourth annual event, and then in doubles as well. And oh, Gary is going to yes. get a strike out of that. Oh, and you see the expression. <laughs> The 8, 9, and 10 were left originally, and then all of a sudden it turned into a strike. There goes the 5 pin, there goes the 8, the 10, and finally the 9. 116, two bonus balls to come. And just leaving the 2 pin. Right there, 20 in the 10th, and a 126 for Gary Carrington to open this match. Right now, Steve Vadney is out of 108 clip, but he's going to increase that because he's working on a spare in the 8th. Needs a good fill and, and a couple more marks, really, to catch Gary. No break there. Five, four, five, seven. Did get the 10 pin to kick out of there, but... Still a very difficult shot. Play the wood in front of the 4-7. and 
Oh, well, you got the five pin. I thought the five pin would be the problem pin. And the 10. 105 through nine, so you see the difference just one, but Gary has put up 20 in the 10th. Yes, it'll be a strike. Matching the strike for Gary Carrington. Cleared out nine in a hurry. The seven pin was looked like he was going to stand. And Last minute, would roll over and knock that one down. So, as Doug said, matches a strike. Look out. Ooh, a little thin. Leaves the diamond. Had another piece of wood coming across from the left, but the second piece stopped it. Three, five, six, and the nine. And we're going to be awfully close. Two pins will be the difference after game one. 126 for Gary Carrington, 124 for Steve Vadney. It's a good one going. We'll be back with game two in a minute. A little bit later on, we have $60 in the bonus ball contest jackpot. And if we have your postcard, then you have a chance to win it, as well as a set of brand new bowling balls from Paramount Industries in Medway, Mass. But if we don't have your cards, you can't win. So please send them in. Regular size postcards only, please. The, uh, Oversized ones, again, we give to Dan so that he can tear them up, <laughs> throw them away. Name, address, number from 1 to 10. The number is the pinfall you think will drop on the uh, bonus ball at the end of the show. If it matches the pinfall, then you win the jackpot and a set of bowling balls. The bowler gets a set as well. And mail them on into Park Place Lanes, Route 28, Wyndham, New Hampshire, 03087. Good luck. Steve Vadney. Trailing by two, starting game two with a strike. Was in the one-two pocket, but luck out, watch how close tight he is on the head pin. Just clearing out the nine and the ten, the last two. But that ball looked uh, about it. three miles wide going into that pocket that time. Wants that four pin to fall forward, take the two with it. That's not going to happen. Oh, what an effort! Right in between mm. the three and the six. Jumped it over there. It just. Didn't do any damage. And an eight bucks. That'll bring Gary Carrington back to the line. Oh, Ooh. one, eight, nine. Spread eagle plus that five pin. Oh, great effort there. Again, not the uh, cut shot did not get rewarded <laughs> as it should have been there, but that was a great effort. And an outstanding 10 bucks. Put a little star next to that one if you're scoring this match, if this remains close. It's those kind of boxes that win matches. You get a bad leave off the first ball, and you're able to work it out for a 10. Means a lot in the end. And again, kind of heavy on the head pin this time. Three, six, ten with the seven pin. Oh. oh. <laughs> I'll tell you, the last few weeks, he, he has just been incredible on cut shots. If he doesn't make it, he comes awful close. Well, that swings the lead over temporarily, at least, to Steve Vadney by five as you see in the lower left hand corner Steve trailing by two coming in back in November uh, although he hasn't been here all season Steve's been busy back in November he was up in Sydney Nova Scotia participating on the world championship New Hampshire team his teammates were Tim Lipke Brian Uphold Bill Gover Mike Poulin and John Thomas John Thomas from Bradford, Mass. The others from New Hampshire. And then uh, after that, on a separate occasion, uh, the world champs were invited back to participate in another tournament in Halifax, Nova Scotia. They finished fourth in that one. We talked about it before, the great bowling interest up in that part of Canada. And the provinces of Canada, it's 
building new lanes all the time. And another big strike by Steve. Really enthusiastic up there about candle pin bowling. See the replay? Just tripping that two pin, last one to go down, and two marks this game, and both strikes off the ball of Steve Vadney. Gary Carrington right in the pocket. Which way will it fall? Not the right way. Just the five pin. With the little guide for the spare. Well, he has a chance to regain the lead, at least temporarily, with this spill. Seven drop, one, three, seven left for Gary. Piece of wood next to the three pin, also in the back. Got a shot at it. Mm. Huh. Gary's going to wait for that piece of wood. It may nestle over there. Well, apparently it won't get there. He's got a clear shot at the 7, though, for the 10 box, and we will pause right here. Just about halfway through this match, and it's still very, very tight. Steve Vadney will no doubt retake the lead when he comes back to fill that strike when we return in a minute. Here are the winning numbers from last night's Tri-State Megabucks drawing. Strike in the fourth, trailing by three. So anything over three, he'll retake the lead. Back and forth we go. Oh, double strike. That was just destined, destined to have another strike. It's just carbon copy of the other one. Nice and tight in the one-two pocket. Remember I said that his ball backs up a little bit. So that's his pocket because the ball is breaking back to the right. Just cuts through the pins and gets great pin action. That time off target. Oh, not a bad break. One and two left. I want to kind of expand on this whole business of the ball backing up here when we get a chance, Dan. Steve going for his third mark in a row, looking for a spare on top of a double strike, and he's got it. Now, we we talk about that a lot because there are, are an awful lot of bowlers at this level who, who do throw a bit of a backup kind of ball like Steve does, but when you're teaching, and I know you do a lot of instructional work, that's not really how you teach it, is it? No, no. You don't want, you want the ball coming off the fingertips almost the same time. And what Steve does probably comes off his fourth finger last, which gives him kind of an in-shoot on the ball. Nice oh. delicate spare for Gary Carrington there certainly, in the fifth. Certainly was. Had to negotiate that piece of wood next to it first and did that. Right now, the story of this match is that double strike. Turned a very close match into a 25-pin lead right now for Steve, but here he's going to see what he can do about that. Four horsemen right, one, three, six, and ten. But that's not to say, of course, that there's a necessarily a right way or a wrong way or anything like that. It's a question of what's comfortable for you. Right. Uh, who's going to argue the way Steve Adnan bowls, <laughs> so, you know? In fact, the way he's bowling today, I might start backing my ball up. <laughs> but uh, it's like any other sport. When you teach fundamentals, you, you want to teach something that comes naturally. This is not a natural movement of, of the elbow joint and the shoulder joint. Right. I guess you can relate it to, relate it to the screwball in baseball. Oh, boy. Slid the five pin over. That's a five drop on a spare. Two, four, five, seven, eight. Oh, oh yes. boy, I was gonna say the wood might have cost him that spare, but was able to clear out that eight pin last minute. Four in a row. Two spares follow, uh, two strikes followed by two spares. Looking at the three pin, and it goes! Oh, oh, oh. Wow. Five marks in a row for Steve Vadney. Three of them have been strikes. And that's four strikes in this game. He started with one in the first box. 
Gary Carrington is right back. Look out. This is coming forward. The two pin will stay, though. He needs Marks just to keep pace right now. Trailing by 26. Has a spare for him. In the seventh. Our lead balloons to 36. Yes, can't get that extra pin. Wanted that 10 pin to go down. The way he's been bowling, you expect him to make these shots, though. This comes very close to the cut shots if he doesn't make them. Now, that time he's on the inside. Oh, that was a lob. That was a lob. That'll be an eight. Meanwhile, Steve Vadney, or Steve Vadney has five marks in a row. He's working on a strike now. He's got a great game going here. House will come down if he throws a double here, I think. Off target, though. Shoot at the four horsemen right. He's got to be careful if he splits it, because that wood may deflect the ball. And let's see what happens. Oh, he missed the hit pin, so we'll never know. Nine fill on the strike, though. One forty-seven in the ninth. All right, walk the way up. Wow, oh, nothing touched, barely. The four and the eight pin. Let's see where this wood ends up. I guess it's going to stay out of the way. He's going to have a clear shot at the four seven, uh, four eight, I should say. It's already at one forty-seven through nine. Ooh, just sliding by the four. Back. It's going to be over 150, 156 right now. 157. Right, two string total, 281. Steve Vadney. Well, two open frames for Gary Carrington. Desperately needs some marks. Gotta cut that into the 41 pin lead into the 20s, anyways. Well, Gary was off the head pin, but there's enough wood there. This could go if he is able to hit the one three. Just like that. You call it. <laughs> we said it last week. Sometimes it doesn't matter what Gary does on the first ball. Of course, it matters more if you're on a mark, like now. That's right. But he's been so accurate with those spare shots. That time he was right on the head pin and maybe a little too much so. We'll see if he can find a way. A couple choices could go to the wood on the right, snapping off the wall, or the wood in front of the 4-7. Not quite. So Gary will have some ground to make up in game three. He scores a 121 for a two-string total, 247. So it's a 34-pin lead after two, as you see, for Steve Vadney with the big 157 second game. We'll be back with the third and deciding string of this match in a minute. Before we get back to the bowling, a quick reminder, if you'd like to uh, drop us a line, if you have a comment or a question, uh, criticism, whatever it might be about uh, bowling in general or about Stars and Strikes in particular, we'd love to hear from you. Just mail it on in to Stars and Strikes, WNDS TV 50. 50 Television Place, Derry, New Hampshire, 03038. Whatever uh, is on your mind in the way of uh, comments about this show or about bowling in general, we'd love to hear from you. We can, again, get to all the mail on the air, but we do love to uh, mention as many as we can and acknowledge people who have sent things in and taken the time to write. So uh, if you'd like to jot us a line, uh, please feel free. And Gary Carrington now is ready to go as we move into game three of our semifinal match here on Candlepin Stars and Strikes. Could have got a few today because we didn't have any... Much mail at all this time. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. I went and checked the mailbox again. Make oh. sure. Oh, big Gary. strike. Gary with only his second strike of the match, but that's as good a time as any to have it when you're trailing by 34. Starts the third game with the big strike. Well, right now, each bowler with 10 marks. The difference, as we mentioned earlier, 
that double strike for Steve Vadney in the midst of five consecutive marks in the second game. That was the difference. Oh, spare on strike for Gary. That's way to start when you're down by that many. Strike and then the four horsemen tripping out the 10 pin. Spare on strike. In fact, uh, going over the score sheet for that second game, Dan, uh, for the five boxes when he had the five consecutive marks, the fourth through the eighth, Steve had 102 pins in those five boxes. Wow, he just had a, a weird leave. <laughs> a weird leave. And now he's actually got a spare leave. If he hits the two pin, oh, he leaves the eight. No luck. So quickly, at least 10 pins are going to be knocked off that lead. Ten it is. And now Steve is working against another mark. No lead is sacred here. As we saw a couple weeks ago, with Reggie's line opening up a 179 and a 52 pin advantage. And before he was able to capture that victory, he actually fell behind. Steve will shoot at the 2-5 for a spare. Oh, it's going to hurry. Ooh, played it off the wood. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if he actually exactly played it off the wood. That's where the ball went. But <laughs> he's got a little smirk on his he's face. Listen there, to so his fans yeah. during the break. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Somebody told him to play the wood. <laughs> Gary now on a spare, looking for three marks in a row, and he needs one more pin to drop, and it won't. Well, if there's a way, Gary will find it. A seven and a ten, a piece of wood couple pieces of wood hit that piece of wood on the left and start deflecting things yeah and he's got another piece in the channel there that could have some oops he missed the object wood which was the front piece so his streak will stop at two and he'll try to start another one up as he just switches over to lane 31. all right here are the taping dates i know you've been waiting a long time to write these down they get cramps in their yeah. hands with their <laughs> pencils waiting we're going to tape the Tournaments of Champions on consecutive Sundays, March the 29th and April 5th. March 29th, we will tape the Singles Tournament of Champions, the noon show. And then on April the 5th, we will tape the Doubles Tournament of Champions, the one o'clock show. And big spare for Gary there in the fourth. Needs to keep putting them up there. One, seven, and nine. There goes the nine. And another spare. Another mark. Three out of four boxes now for Gary, starting his third game. And by the way, if you're unfamiliar with our taping schedules or if you've never been here before, on those Tournaments of Champions days, we will begin at about 9.30 in the morning. Steve drops nine on the spare, leaving the five pin. We'll start about 9.30 in the morning and go till about five o'clock in the afternoon. So at any point during that time, if you are in the neighborhood, we're at... Park Place Lanes, which is on Route 28 North in uh, Wyndham, New Hampshire, not far from Exit 3 off Route 93, and Steve misses that one. Well, he tried to get by the front piece of wood, and I th think he thought the wood was froze behind it, so it would kick forward. Didn't happen. He ends up with a nine box. So the lead now is 25. However, Gary Carrington already has a mark in the fourth. Oh, that ball crossed over in the 1-3 pocket. Yes. Well, watch out. <laughs> Let's see. Nope. Seven pin stands. Yeah. Right there. Spare in the fourth. Each bowler with a spare up in the fourth. We've got six frames to go in this semifinal match here on Stars and Strikes. It's a good one. Gary Carrington and Steve Vadney will resume in a minute. Here we go. Final six frames, and Gary trailing by 25, working on a spare. Both bowls working on a spare. Oh, that was in there. One, two pocket, eight drop. Six, nine left. Right on it for the spare. That's mark number 13 for Gary. Just 
Catches a six. Wood and the ball do the damage on the nine. Four out of five. Boxes marks the third game for Gary Carrington. Here's the fill. Ooh, an off target. He was fortunate not to get a half Worcester on that ball. And Gary makes it a 10. But that four fill could be costly. Now Steve Vadney working on his spare in the fourth. Right. Oh, second time we've seen that. One for each baller now. The one, eight, and nine chopped out. Ooh, and now lots of work to do on the third ball. And now the two pin is gone. <laughs> Fortunately, you only have one ball left. Still looking at six pins. That's a tough seven. So the lead is down to 13 all of a sudden. Get it back here. Reminder, our participating sponsor in this four-week series here on Candlepin Stars and Strikes, Emmett Horgan and all the folks at Rockingham Toyota Dodge Nissan in Salem, New Hampshire. Come to Salem and save at Rockingham Toyota Dodge Nissan. Be sure when you go in that you tell Emmett or whoever that you heard about them here on Stars and Strikes. Oh, Steve misses the conversion on the triangle. So this thing, thing is still very much in doubt. Oh, there's another pin on count for Gary Carrington, so the lead now is 12. Four frames to go. Right oh in the pocket. Oh, baby. <laughs> <laughs> this is the patented Carrington strike. Watch the four pin. Boom, and there it's tripping the four. Mark number 14, Gary. Looking for another one. Well, at least he got the six pin out of there. It's been something Gary's had to be concerned about carrying the extra pin sometimes. Gotta that time he did. Got to be concerned with the wood right here, too. Oh, no got it. problem. Drove it right straight back. Spare on strike. Skipped it down there, too, but kept it on target. Well, that puts the pressure squarely on the shoulders of Steve Vadney now. Oh, how about that? Answering the call. Answering the call. That is the sixth strike that Steve has thrown in this match. Can't make any mistakes, though. That's not a mistake. <laughs> it's almost another double. Well, picks this pin up and we'll be back to the 12 pin advantage we started two boxes ago. That's what's going to happen. How about that? Great bowling, both bowlers. Going spare strike in the seventh and eighth with the match on the line. And now it's back to Gary Carrington for his final two. Needs a big fill here. Ooh, he gets oh. the big fill, but well, the wood turned a little bit for him. Now he wants it to stop. He doesn't want it to roll back that far. As you can see his hand gesture, he wants the wood to come back out here. That's not going to. All right, just play the left-hand tip of that wood and hope he can snap it off the 10-pin over for the 5. Or maybe off oh, the he's going to cut, cut the 5. Oh, oh, oh. And he came very close to doing it, too. Because he really couldn't see anything with the wood. Takes the 1. 136. Now he just has to try and throw up a big mark here in the 10th or perhaps a double mark. Yeah, and then hope Steve does not fill that spare in the 8th with a big fill. Whoa, oh, that's a my. Big well, that was just as good as the oh. last ball, too. Could have been three in a row. You're exactly right. One, well, 46. Gary throws another one. Things could get very interesting. <laughs> Ooh, 
Watch there it. it is. Watch it. Watch there it. There it is. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> Double strike in the 10th. Just a matter of whether or not the seven pin was going to go down. And he's got one ball to come. He's at 156. Now that ball was big. This one is huge. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of pins in the last frame. Oh, oh boy. no. The oh, second boy. time it's happened to him today. Still a great finish, though, for Gary Carrington. 159. And he puts just a little bit more pressure on Steve Vadney. 406. So Steve needs a 125 to tie, 126 to win. And he's at a 117 clip right now. So uh, he doesn't really need another mark, but he's got to really fill this mark and have two big tens. This is the key ball, really. Right. This will determine whether he needs another one. He's going to need another mark. Wow. He's at 103 through 8. He needs 126 to win the match. So he needs um, either mark here or a mark in the 10th. No, he won't get it here. Slips it by. Now these are big pins because uh, I'll help him if he does get a mark in the 10th. 111, one box to go. He needs a mark and five on it. Needs a 126 to win, a mark and five. Just like that, mark five. Sounds easy enough, huh? <laughs> a little heavy. Whoa, oh, it's boy. Coming. It's coming. The boy, three pin will stay there. Looked like he was going to be left with a four, three, four, six. But watch out now. He's got a piece of wood looking directly at him. got the spare that's not over yet wow well now remember Steve needs to throw a five on this ball to win the match as we take another look at the spare but what must Gary Carrington be thinking about that three fill on oh, the I know. strike well he hit the head pin that's yep. but here we go need five to win four is a tie should be okay there it is strike in the tenth Steve Vadney wins it with 20 in the tenth what a terrific match congratulations to both bowlers as they Give each other the handshake and the pat on the back. What a match. 412 to 406. Steve Vadney advances to the championship match against Tom Morgan. We will talk to both bowlers in a minute. And welcome back to Park Place Lanes. Doug Brown along with Dan Murphy, Candlepin Stars and Strikes. What a terrific match. Let's have a big round of applause for Gary Carrington as he'll come up and accept uh, third prize money here. $250, and uh, Gary, I know it's no consolation, but uh, you unfortunately have joined a, a long list of guys who have bowled 400s here, and it hasn't been good enough to win, but uh, obviously the double strike in the 10th, you put the pressure on at the end. Yeah, well, I would have liked to get a little better fill on that, the mm -hmm. one, one eight nine or something like that. Uh, put the pressure on Steve. He needed a mark in the last two boxes. Uh, it's, it's tough to do. It's not easy. And he pulled it out. I want to know, uh, again, this week, as you did last week, though, you made some terrific uh, spare shots. Uh, what, what advice would you give to people who, uh, you know, have to concentrate, and especially those cut shots, because that obviously is the most difficult part of the game. I don't know. I, I, I shoot the, uh, just the front pin. You know, I, I try to split them, and sometimes they go over there, sometimes they don't. It doesn't always work like that. Well, I'll tell you, the last two weeks they've been going. There's no question about that. Uh, we do also have the runner-up plaque for you from the NNR Trophy Company of Winchenden, and also uh, congratulations. Now, you already are in the uh, the doubles tournament of champions. You've got one more shot left now to get uh, to get with the singles, too. Yeah, I get a little help in the doubles. <laughs> I think I need it. <laughs> Thanks, Gary. Congratulations. A 406, not quite good enough on this day. Steve Vadney over on lane 31 now for our bonus ball as we'll try and get a match for a $60 winner. And it'll be a nine. And the card is out. And the guess is seven for Ruth. I believe it's Golej or Gole from Manchester. Hope I pronounced that right, Ruth. Uh, you'll be getting a consolation gift from TV50 and, a, and the NHCBA. We'll go up to $70 next week in the jackpot, and, uh, and you'll be back. Uh, had them all the way, right? <laughs> no, 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 no. Gary and I were talking between the second and third string. He said, geez, I can't throw a strike, and boom, I guess he was saving them for a finale there. <laughs> that was a, an unbelievable finish. Obviously, uh, do, you, do you personally like to be in that situation where you know what you have to get, have the last chance? 
Uh, I like it that way a lot, uh, but there is the other advantage to bowing first, you know, mm -hmm. you can let somebody chase you, and, you know, so it adds that one little bit more pressure to the other person, you know, so. All right, well, but, you, got, you got that one in the bag. Now you got to come back next week and, and roll against Tom Morgan for the uh, for the big money and the spot in the Tournament of the Champions. Right, That's that one's been getting away from me I, since you started. <laughs> <laughs> That's right, we were talking about that, and here's, here's another chance for you. We'll be looking forward to that match next week, Steve. Give it a shot. All right, thanks very much. Congratulations. Terrific match, uh, 412 for Steve Vadney, and as we... Check one more time at the ladder to look ahead to next week. Uh, we'll end up with the number two seed. Seems like nobody can win two in a row on this show anymore. Well, Steve's going to see if he can put a stop to that, but he's got a tough one in uh, Tommy Morgan next week. Why is that? I, every once in a while, we have somebody come on. They'll win two, three shows in a row. It's been a long time since we've had somebody win all four coming up from the bottom, but it seems like in this recent stretch, uh, nobody's able to put two back-to-back. -back. I, I think that's a tribute to the talent we've got on the show, I believe. It's, it's really tough. The mental, uh, the, everybody's got the physical attributes to win, but it's the mental thing. You get a fresh bowler and a quality bowler coming at you every week. All right, stay tuned. Just a few minutes from now, we'll have the semifinal match in our men's doubles tournament of uh, men's doubles Stars and Strikes doubles program. That'll be coming up at 1 o'clock. And don't forget, next week is championship week. First of all, at 12 noon here on Stars and Strikes, and then again at 1 o'clock on Stars and Strikes doubles. Till next time, for Dan Murphy and the whole TV50 sports crew, Doug Brown, bye-bye from Park Place Lanes.